Hello and welcome to our worship on June the 28th, the third Sunday after Trinity, with the Forest Group United Reformed Church in North East London. My name is Ulrika Bell and it's great to have you here with us. In the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our opening prayer, let us join in together. We lay our broken world in sorrow at your feet, haunted by hunger, war and fear oppressed by power and hate, where human life seems less than profit, might and pride. Though to unite us all in you, you lived and loved and died. We bring our broken towns, our neighbors hurt and bruised. You show us how old pain and wounds for new life can be used. We bring our broken hopes for lives of dignity. Workless and overworked, you love and call us to be free. We bring our broken loves, friends parted, families torn. Then in your life and death we see that love must be reborn. We bring our broken selves, confused and closed and tired. Then through your gift of healing grace, new purpose is inspired. O oh Spirit, on us breathe with life and strength anew. Find in us love and hope and trust and lift us up to you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Reading for today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 21. 
Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your maidservant. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the maidservant into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on the shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. He went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down nearby, about a bowshot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there nearby, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Now, when was the last time you've messed something up? I mean, really messed up. Honestly, we're all guilty of this sort of not getting situations right. Sometimes quite knowingly and ashamedly so. Sometimes we didn't even notice. Plans were made and put in place. Good things should have gone ahead. All was set and ready to go. And then it went all pear-shaped because we were not able to make it work. Our ego, combined with somebody else's ego, was in the way. What a shame. In our story today, everyone contributes to the disaster. Sarah should have been really happy. Her dream to become a mother had come true. And with the miracle pregnancy and birth of her God-promised baby boy, she must have been over the moon and very exhausted indeed. Motherhood is all demanding and 100% life-changing even for young women. And the older the, you get, the more exhausted you are physically. There's a reason for menopause. 
Maybe because night fields were just too much for her and in her own age, she asked the much younger Hagar for help, which must have been Hagar's, must have made Hagar's boy, Ishmael, really jealous. Maybe Ishmael had picked on, up on his mum's difficult relationship with her mistress. Hagar's mocking and condescending remarks towards Sarah, the competition of the two women in relation to Abraham, their different age, Sarah old, Hagar young, maybe difference in beauty. Sarah in the Bible is said to have been very beautiful indeed. Maybe Hagar was envious, I don't know. We, we don't know what Hagar looked like. But certainly competition in fertility and status. And Ishmael knew that he was special because he was Abraham's son. And now this baby boy, Isaac, um, was taking his extra special place. Of course, there would have been jealousy and envy. But the disaster certainly wasn't Ishmael's fault. He was just a child. So, yeah, it was the mums, wasn't it? Sarah and Hagar. Hagar should have known better. By having a child with Abraham, she felt superior to Sarah and mocked Sarah's inability to conceive. In a society where women's status is measured on the children she bears, and especially on the number of sons that she bears, this must have been a constant pain in Sarah, Sarah's life to endure, and Hera milked it. Reading the story, we would have loved Hagar to be more gracious and loving and caring, even to older Sarah. But then what do we know about the complexity of threesome relationships? We have no idea what went on between the women and had been going on all the time, and then the role that Abraham played in all this. So yes, Hagar should have known better, and Sarah should have known better in her age, to react so scornfully towards Hagar and Ishmael, to, to tell Abram to send her away into the desert, off to death. What a horrible thing to do. Could she not have been more gracious? Doesn't wisdom come with old age? The Danish 18th century philosopher, Søren Kierkegaard, he calls this the despair of old age that you think wisdom would increase with old age and with the years, but it doesn't, or at least not necessarily so. In fact, he says, wisdom decreases unless you actively practice a humble, inquisitive, curious and learning spirit and keep your mind open to the mystery of God. Now, maybe we can take a moment to think of people to whom this description really um, is proper. I mean, think of people who in higher age were really wise or who are really wise, maybe they're still alive, um, and have a moment and think of them and giving thanks to God for them and their amazing wisdom in old age. Let's just do that for a minute. So thank you, God, for these people with so much wisdom in old age. Amen. Now let's think of Abraham. He was a bit disappointing too, actually quite a lot. He is far from the great patriarch we would like to think him of, the old respectful man who with authority does what is best. Instead, he just does what he's told. Can he not speak up for peace in his house? Can he not say that people here are treating each other unfairly, unkindly, and that no one is going to be sent to die in the desert? Instead, he resigns and gives Hagar a rucksack with some food and water as a sad token of care and sends them off into their death. Well, however... God made his plan work anyway. And his plan was to make 
Abraham into a faithful nation, into a father, to make Abraham into a father of all nations. God made sure this would be remembered as a miracle. So first he let Abraham and Sarah grow to super old age to really make his point and mark the specialness of the event. And then they messed it up. They didn't trust God enough in this. So Hagar got dragged into the game and with her pregnancy, the relationship trouble started. And then God came in again in the three visitors under the tree at Mamre, the story which we heard last week, prompting a boy, promising a boy to Sarah. And everything was going to happen now. Sarah and everyone else should have been elated, but no, they messed it up again with their egos and their personalities clashing. But God came to rescue again. Hagar and Ishmael were saved by an angel in the desert, and God is growing going to grow a big nation from Ishmael as well, the Muslim people. In Jesus the Jew, us Christians, uh, or we Christians, are part of the Abrahamitic family tree as well, all of us sharing Abraham as a father. So I take great comfort from this story. To me, it says, God will also follow through with the plans that he may have for us despite our intervening and despite our egos. We do not know his plans, but we can trust that the big storyline will go on, even despite our faults and sometimes even despite our endeavors. But try, we must, we can't just give it up and say, oh, God is going to sort it all out. All pictures at the first, that we saw at the first prayer of this service represent disasters of our times, grievances, inequality, unfairness, everything of today. We saw the migrant boat and the pictures of the victims of the Reading killing. And we saw a picture of, um, uh, of, of big industry um, polluting our environment. We saw a homeless person and we saw people um, who are working in the hospital uh, of, of dark skin color, the inequality that that comes with these days, that um, people with darker skin color on farm, you know, work in hospitals with low wages and die of the virus um, so much more than white people. So these are all inequalities and unfairness of today. And there are many more, of course, so we could pick out one of those uh, for us today and try and make a difference there. Um, whoever watches this, maybe um, it could be a conversation you could have with, we could have with, with somebody, or it could be we put something in writing, maybe we sign a petition of some form, maybe by making a chari charitable donation, maybe by praying for for this cause or this particular uh, inequality or injustice. As children of Abraham and Sarah, we do not have to cope, to copy all the uh, mistakes that they have done. We can analyze and see where we are part of today's injustice uh, in, in the life that we lead today in our society. And we can apologize, we can do things that they haven't done uh, we can apologize and say, look, I've done wrong here. Um, and even if it is admitting to our own ignorance, we can ask for forgiveness. And most importantly, we can make amends. Amen. And I've got a little musical meditation for us now with pictures taken from our, from our uh, three faiths Forum Interfaith uh, Pilgrimage to the Holy Land last December.
Now let us come to God in prayer. Creator God, we praise you for you have made the world so manifold. If only we had eyes to truly see it. We praise you for our father Abraham and all his children. If only we would pay more attention to the stars around us. We praise you for your long history with the world, with humankind and with people of faith. If only we could better feel these deep roots in you. We praise you for your steadfast guidance. If only we dared to lean in on you and let go of our fears. Eternal Lord of love, come with your comfort to those who grieve. For the families of the victims of the Reading stabbing, for their friends, partners, the communities they left behind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who died in the waters of the Mediterranean Sea, seeking a better life. For the refugee children who have no one to protect them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For those who suffer existential fear in their country or in their homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for the biggest crisis of this world, O oh Lord, for the plants and animals, air, sea and sky, all suffering from us humans. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For wisdom in the world's governments to positive, positively counter climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our society in this time of easing of lockdown. For our churches and our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our loved ones. And for all who, for all we have promised to pray for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let us finish with a blessing which was brought to us by the churches of in Ipswich. 
So all the churches came together to record a blessing. And we're going to finish with that.
gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward.